to uh, in order from left to right, Will, David and Jeff. Hi, uh, hello. <laughs> Coven of the Sacred Wellhead uh, from Gloucestershire in England and really happy to have you all on the show and uh, I've known you for a very long time online like before Facebook. I remember once, <laughs> once upon a time about 20 years ago googling gay witchcraft and met. there you were with your website. Um, David is also, also famous upon Instagram as that guy with the parrot um, <laughs> uh, and also uh, famous for knitting and crocheting I think. So uh, welcome again and um, and we'll start. So um, tell us a bit about yourselves, uh, how long you've been involved in paganism and Wicca um, because that's uh, really interesting. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll start. start. Um, I kind of, it, it's, it's something for me that I've always been interested in. Um, that sense of mystery, that sense of the unknown, um, if you like, what's going on behind that curtain. Um, I was born and brought up in South Africa. Um, and while there, while living in Durban, um, I met a very interesting man who kind of taught me a lot about Africa, the land, how to sense the land, how to be a part of it. And I suppose then when I came to England, that carried through into a sense of the English land and the English landscape and the change of the seasons, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm. I've been in traditional, British traditional witchcraft now for probably over 35 years. We lose count after a while. Um, I started with the Silvers line um, and then hived off from there and started my own, my own coven, which is the Sacred Wellhead. Um, which has grown and changed a lot over the years. Um, it started off very traditional, um, mainly because David and myself were the only two sort of gay witches or people who were interested in paganism that we met. So we ran it together. Um, but as then, a, anyway, as yeah, yeah just as a, as a life couple, as a magical couple. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, it wasn't something we ever really kind of thought about it just kind of happened that, that we did it that way um, and I suppose as we moved into now sort of more modern times we've had more um, Ooh, oh I do excuse it? the cat um, <laughs> we've magnificent had, cat <laughs> we've, uh, we've had some we've had some more gay people and other people come along who are interested in, in learning about witchcraft so the coven's changed and grown, but yeah, I've begun, I've hit that point where I've been in it for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed every minute of it though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, I recently celebrated my 30th, the 30th okay, anniversary yeah. of my initiation, so. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, which is quite a big one. It's a good yeah. one to celebrate. That is a big one, yeah. I'll probably start losing count now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was for another decade, at least. <laughs> trying to count up the years then myself and realizing actually this, this year will be my 30th year. Yeah. Uh, oh. year. Hey, we're the same, we're the same, well, yeah, same so, vintage. Yeah, exactly. Um, Pretty cool. I, I, I came to the craft from Jeffrey. Um, I had, I actually grew up Catholic uh, in the, and, and actually quite a, quite a devout and profoundly Catholic family. Um, you know, uh, uncles and cousins and family members are actually in the church and Vatican lawyers and all this kind of stuff. So it was sort of assumed that I was going to go into the church myself and I went off and did theology and philosophy and Eastern studies and all this kind of stuff. And uh, then disturbed and upset everyone by turning out to be gay and <laughs> deciding maybe all of this lot wasn't for me anyway. I kind of went off on a whole sort of Eastern religions trip. Um, and was just getting into the idea, actually read, I suppose, like a lot of people of, of our generation, come on, Seth, of our generation, I, I read The Mists of Avalon. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. And that book really had me thinking, oh, my God, I wish this was real. This is, this is amazing. This, this is a, a religion that they're talking about that is profoundly feminist, that it is... Uh, environmental, that is ecological, that is about social justice. I mean, you know, even though this is set in the past, ridiculous, it was true. 
and sort of the next month, literally, I met Jeffrey at the local gay bar, <laughs> one of my first times there, um, and we just hit it off and we're chatting and talking and and I and, oh, what have you been recently reading and uh, I mentioned this the myths of Avalon and oh I wish that the way of riches were real and he went well they are I'm rich. do you want to come home and have a coffee and we'll talk about it and that was it you know. it's a great pickup line <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> Whatever it is, 30 plus years later. I seem to recall once or twice maybe Alex used that in the pub too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe that. And then Will's actually our most, one of our most recent, as you know, there's been somewhat a few years ago. We've, we've had some but... new initiates after mm -hmm. me, so um, always was interested in magic growing up. I'm part of the generation that grew up reading Harry Potter books. So that's probably the best way of placing myself. I was still in school when they were still being written um so that's kind of my background in the you know there's lots of fantasy books written for my generation lots of fantasy stories they're made, made into films and cgi but i also remember tape cassettes and floppy disks <laughs> so you know we're, we're part of that generation that really has this sort of old world new world kind of memory which is interesting and i was looking to try and learn some more about spirituality and I was interested in the occult and I was like oh well I wonder if there's something I could join that kind of deals with this and then you open up the internet and the internet gives you the internet's information um and <laughs> I was like well is there, is there something to do with like inclusiveness because whenever you search for witchcraft it talks about being hugely feminist and I was like okay I'm a man this is a little bit difficult uh trying to find something which is sort of pro male uh actually deals with men at all um and when you look online um trying to find anything that actually talks about being inclusive you know just it's okay yeah. isn't anything. it just it kind of goes along its heteronormative route it's not a problem but it takes a heteronormative route mm -hmm. and then i stumbled across a website for a, a cousin called the sacred wellhead <laughs> that had photos of these two and actually <laughs> talked about who they were and their, you know, hand fastening and other pagan practices and actually how it all comes together to work as part of a group and a coven. And it was like, oh, actually, this is really interesting. Um, and when you're also reading about the fact that some things are done in actual and some things are done by symbol and token, um, finding out that you can actually have that as an option, mm. as a choice, as something that you can have as part of your spirituality was really important to me. Um, so I'm, I was at that point living in London, which is was a, is actually a two-hour drive from here. Um, <laughs> so we have such uh, I, I had two phone calls. I spoke to you guys twice, mm -hmm. and then you said, "No, look, just just come and knock come on my door. Yeah. Just <laughs> knock on it. the door." So I did, mm -hmm. and yeah. I've never looked back. Um, you know, I've, I've worked in other places, not been able to make you know covenant and things like that all of the time, but actually as part of a spiritual progress, as part of a spiritual journey, it's ended up meaning more and more and more to me and has taken over more and more of my life. Um, I'm now heading towards second degree, well, I'm second degree, degree, heading right? towards my third right. degree. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, been a wonderful six years of getting to know these two and learning all about God, goddess, craft, occultism, um, and all kinds of other things. I probably shouldn't have learned along the way, but I've enjoyed <laughs> learning about nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the uh, incidental things that you learn along the way are super interesting. Um, since you mentioned um, inclusive websites, I have put in a plug for inclusivewicca.org, um, which is my website dealing with all things yes, yeah, LGBT yeah. inclusive. We, did, and, we, we have had a, a, a special study of it this week, yeah, we did, actually <laughs> re-going back and re-reading some of the articles and stuff that you've done and, and thinking, yeah, this is this is good stuff. This is good stuff. This is exactly the stuff that we've been talking a lot recently ourselves. Mm. Um, it's also a really good Facebook page mm. if you're on Facebook watching this and you're wondering about how you can get involved. <laughs> there we are. We've done yeah. Start there. Because <laughs> yes. actually, it was something that I wasn't even aware where there was a movement for. Um, yeah. And still, actually, through knowing these yeah. guys, David's really heavy with social media. Um, and actually, that got me looking at the Inclusive Wicker page. Um, and it's really interesting. It's really Great. good. Got yeah, really yeah. I um, I actually left Facebook in 2018, but the the Facebook group is still going strong. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, do get stuck in. Um, so uh, yeah, so the next question is very very relevant to all of that, which is how accommodating uh, slash inclusive slash affirming is your tradition. 
um so obviously your coven is very <laughs> inclusive but yeah. uh the wider because one of the things that interests me about like Gardnerian wicker has a figure or at least my my lineage of Gardnerian wicker has a, a non-binary deity figure um and that goes back to i mean dorian valiente writing the prayer for it so yeah um and i don't know that i i don't know if that found its way into the alexandrian tradition or not um i mean well from from the angle that i've come from so the the traditional line that i came from in the the well, early 80s was that men were men and women were women and little fairy creatures were little fairy creatures for the situation. Yay, hitchhikers. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do that one a lot. <laughs> I yep. do that one a lot. Um, and, then I, and, and then I came along um, and kind of um, talked my way around it and through it and into it and was then initiated. I mean, um, actually, in, in the early days when you did first start, the, 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 the coven kind of accepted you as this is Jeffrey. They didn't really know Even what to do with me or where to place me or, or how to how to fit me in. There were lots of questions. There were lots of... I suppose it was almost before it was it for polarity and sexuality well, it was, was an issue. It yeah, was almost like it, they hadn't thought about it. Well, it was so that. Yeah. Well, it was that every everything was still just fixed in a heterosexual, heterosexual view, heterocentric, heterocentric yeah, view heterocentric. of polarity. Mm -hmm. um, so they didn't really know where to fit me. So some rituals I was a man, and some rituals I was a girl. It was fine. Um, it probably taught me more about the nature of my own spirit mm. and how my own gender on a spiritual term is a very blurred thing and is very interchangeable. Um, as I moved through the craft, I began to learn more and more and think more and more that um, this should be more inclusive. Um, particularly as I began to study the gods and I began to look at the pantheons of gods and think, well, the gods are inclusive. So yeah, they, re they, reflect, they reflect us. Yeah. And as we move into more, into more modern times where we're moving into a much more inclusive society, those we must allow and encourage the gods to attain their own um, sense of inclusiveness um Diverse. you know the goddess cannot be white and middle class forever as i like to say she's really, <laughs> yeah absolutely she's many, faces, she's many faces and many images to us all yeah definitely and like some people to have this one of my favorite books on on my desk here oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah so you know it's, it's, it's so it was very much about that so when i started a coven one of the main aims was to work toward breaking down some of those old ideas surrounding polarity, surrounding what a woman should be, what a man should be, what any of us should be, and mm. try to move toward uh, actually just be who you are, because that is all you can be. Then you are a true reflection of the gods. Mm. Um, I also studied and worked quite a lot of ceremonial magic. Um, so that has a strong influencing influence in me as well. But a lot of that again is in a um, why are we why do we worry so much about polarity when the soul is all things? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the thing I, well, as, as you know, probably know the way I see it is, you know, polarity is made in many different ways. Yeah, exactly. But none of them are actually created by the fact that you've got two people of different genders. Exactly. Um, my my argument always was um, if. If I was the last man on earth and I met another man and he wanted to be initiated into the craft, do I let the craft die or do I just go, nah, the goddess won't mind? So therefore, after that point, you get to where you begin to dispense with the things that surround polarity, male and female, and these strict laws. And as you begin to blur them, you discover more and more that they are blurred. They never have been just male and female. It's just that was just their starting point. Mm, absolutely. Um, so they, they, and 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 as they reveal to us, we take them on board and we begin to reflect them outwards. I think one of the interesting things 
about how inclusive, how accessible um, the, the tradition has been. I mean, we're, we're Alexandrian tradition. Um, the, I think very often one of the things that, that you know, kind of taken off in the moment is like the sort of sociology, you know, sociology, you know, construction of society, all of that kind of stuff. And um, one of the problems potentially has been that because the, the current rebirth of Wicca is still relatively new, it's, it, it's still quite a, a, a new religious movement, a new um, social development, you know, what have you. Um, and it's that visibility thing. So when Jeffrey actually started, and um, yes, it was in the 80s, the people, we weren't necessarily thinking about even gay rights at that point, you know, gay, gay, gay rights and gay and 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 and, 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 and you know, it was the very beginning of the, the formation of the LGBT identity and stuff in the eighties as well. So even the even that as a movement wasn't particularly strong. It wasn't particularly visible. So actually, the the craft as it developed, it was predominantly heteronormative. The most of the people involved in it were heteronormative and Christian. Mm. They didn't think about actually what about gay people and stuff because that never figured i would say mostly because we've got you know, an awful lot of shit inherited from sort of white imperialist patriarchal victorian society which cleansed everything out to make it yeah so that we can all go off and go to war and rule Do, the rest yeah, of the yeah, world yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. shit you know um so it was really when actually Jeffrey confronted being able to go, well, actually, I'd like to join the craft. So, uh, but wait a minute, you're gay, aren't you? And it's like, yeah, I am. Uh, think about it then. And actually, uh, your initiator, your, your, your coven, your, 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 your well, coven, was very happy to sit down and go, okay, well, talk to me about it. Yeah, I Which is, our first thing is actually to be practical. So talk to me and explain why I, you think we should be in the craft. I had been, I had been slightly prior warned. So I was able to turn around and go, um, well, I feel that, I can be in the craft because if we look at the head of the Greek gods, let's say Zeus, mm -hmm. and who he liked to hop into bed with, we find quite a few men involved. If we look at Pan and his pipes, we discover they're made from the bones of his male lover. So these stories are all there. They, they're deeply rooted. The They've just been tidied out of the way, yeah. like we have, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, absolutely. But, Victorians but came along and boundarized everything. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But I also feel it's kind of our job as witches, thinkers, um, mm -hmm. we've always been the wise, even in olden times, we've always been forward thinkers and forward actors, we've been there at the birth of science, part of our knowledge has been the birth of science. Um, we should be here thinking about this and moving forward with this and helping to create this by going there are a lot of people out there who need a sense of spirit, who need a sense of a deeper sense of understanding within themselves. Mm. That your mainstream religions are pushing away. Yeah. We, should, we should open that door and the gifts they bring with them to help us learn through who they are enriches and nourishes the gods too. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, the way I see it, it's like, you know, witches have always, should always be on the side of the oppressed and the marginalised. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I mean, if you look at the Gospel of Aradia, that's yeah. what Leyland is describing. <laughs> yes, yes. So this, this is a bunch of women going, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? And, and that's the root of, you know, that we know that that's where Doreen and, and, and where, where Gardner, that's where they drew some of their stuff from. Um, I think there's also something else that, 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 that actually it's written in our Wiccan theology. It's written right at the very beginning where it talks about the, that special symbiotic relationship that we have with our gods that, you know, we give to them and they give to us and we almost co-create each other. So actually, if it's in us, it must be in the gods too, we it must gods. express. One of the favourite um, sayings that, 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 that Jeffrey has that actually came from a, an incredible piece of 
deep um, Jungian analysis expressed as art in a, this amazing animated film called The Inevitability of Colour. And he talks about archetypes and spirituality and even down to E equals MC squared and science and religion and how it all integrates and stuff together. And actually it specifically says at one point that the whole point about the archetypes is, is that they are constantly evolving because we are constantly evolving. And mm. there will be new archetypes, new forms of divinity, new gods that have yet to be born. So we've got to lean into those. Um, I think one of the funniest things that whenever you get questioned, and we do still, I mean, back in the day, we used to get quite a lot of quick questions about polarity and actually how can you be a gay couple running a cull and how do you operate as, as, as two high priests, all of those kind of questions. And we've had some of the very, very strong traditionists, particularly in the past, who were kind of, oh, you couldn't do that. And that's not how it's done, you know, and, and, not, not, and, and in the original covens, that's not how it was done and stuff. And it's always kind of interesting to have to come back to going, yeah, no, but actually Time as Alexandrians, really we kind of have to remember the guy who formed our branch of the religion was bisexual at the very least. Yeah, you know? and so, initiated uh, people of the same sex. That's exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly. So, that's exactly. You know, <laughs> if, you're, if you're in that tradition, you can't really- I know adjusting the lighting over here. <laughs> yeah, but I, I know there's lots of people who will say, oh well Alex Alex wasn't the tradition Alex was himself and what he did things that were not what was traditional etc well but it still has it there that's it's like witchcraft that was his <laughs> energy I'm his really energy sorry. went yeah, into, exactly. into the tradition yeah. that he but, created yeah. so it's but, there well I'm pretty sure the first uh the first Gardnerian um same-sex initiation happened at least 25 years ago <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, exactly. And I know for a fact that there was another one. There was some, some more fifteen years ago. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and there must be others out there that I don't know about. So you know, the, the the Zen Buddhist in me actually can't help but look at all of that stuff and go. The trouble is, is as soon as you start boxing yourself mm. in with doctrine and tradition and ideas that are limiting you start limiting your tradition, you start limiting your growth, you start limiting your understanding of the universe. And the universe is, everything we understand about the universe is only concepts, it's only ideas, it's constructs. So don't get stuck on yeah. those. Your know? craft must um, evolve. You redefine things, you rethink about things because that's how we understand them better. A, a, a perfect example is actually how you yourself talk about polarity. And the fact that you talk about that polarity isn't traditionally how we're seeing it is that the, it's two separate things that are opposites and they're opposing. But actually, if you think of polarity as being that it's like the, 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 the negative and positive ends of a magnet, they're not separate. It's a, it's, it's a flux. It's between. Absolutely. Two. You yeah. know, the ends of opposite poles, and suddenly that makes everything open up in a, a, in a completely different way. Yeah, and, and they have to be connected in order to create the energy. Yeah, exactly. Which has always been and must always be pragmatic and practical and prepared to dance the edge of what should be and could be. Yeah, I, I mean, even the, even the Kabbalion in 1912 talks about how polarity and gender are two different things. So, you know, they knew that in 1912, there's no excuse to not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose as a culture, we do have a problem with gender. I mean, it's why transgender people are suffering so badly at the moment, because we mm. still have this. And, you know, if you think men are from Mars, women are from Venus, once you get that idea in your head, they're getting mm. oh, fuck off with one with the species. We're a species. We're not that separate. Yeah. <laughs> It's a tiny little difference between and you're still a mammal and so is the cat yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, just before you get above station there like, <laughs> yeah. you know everything is all interconnected we're all just matter and that's just on a physical level i mean when we're talking about witchcraft we're talking about magic we're talking evidently about transcending that mm -hmm. and so this is just like the lowest echo of something mm -hmm. 
and that's what everyone's getting hung up over. Yeah. Which yeah. is really interesting. Then they actually want to then think about doing some proper magic and actually start wanting to do some sort of change or work some sort of manifestation of something. Well, um, I'd love to see them do it on the physical level um, because I'd love to see them actually physically hold fire in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Watch how long it takes before they think maybe I should have done this on the spiritual level, um, yeah, and that maybe therefore the physical matters slightly less. The symbolic world yeah. is a uh, is a uh, uh, that, well, that's where lots of the magic happens. Yeah, I mean, it happens in the womb world. of the goddess. Yeah. If we don't actually make it a fertile idea on a spiritual level, something that can yeah. birth back into reality. I mean, these are all things that we all talk about. They're things that all witches want to do. So why as witches do we want to get so hung up on something so physical when actually what we're talking about is something so spiritual. much more yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 great point. Love it. Yes, I mean, I was just thinking, you know, on uh, I, going back I, to the Harry Potter thing, you know, like if I could wave my wand and go Wingardium Leviosa and actually... <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely? Yeah. Carry, <laughs> Wouldn't it be carry great? those heavy things around the garden would oh. be a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you'd have to put in the wand with Willow. I know. <laughs> so um yeah uh i think that i mean to me the the spiritual and the physical are intertwined and the whole yes. point of my magical practice is to bring the, the spiritual in the spirit into yeah. matter and yeah. keep bringing more spirit into matter yeah. 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 um and, which is and, why and i consider myself yeah. left hand path it's about raising the the, the the material up to the divine too is that um, yeah well, it's sort of like I'm trying to get away from the vertical metaphor, but like yeah, yeah, bringing them together and ab absolutely. Actually, uh, again, the Zen Buddhist in me would go, well, this is the pure land. This is Nirvana. It's just about being aware that we're there. Well, as, as a certain Jewish mystic once said, uh, the kingdom of heaven is all around you, yet you yeah, cannot exactly. see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. We don't need really get it. Everything, stuck everything, on plumbing. There is everything everything there. works in circles, spirals, you know, yeah. spheres. That, that's yeah. the shape that everything's always worked in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we see that externally, but we also recognise it internally, but it's also the journey that we take as part of our learning. It's all cyclical. We come back round to the point to go, hang on, no, I've been here before. Here, let me make a different choice. Um, you know, but we only know to do that because we recognise where we are, which means we come full circle. You know, the tower is a certain cyclic story. That's just one example. The wheel of the year, another cyclic story, another example. Phases of the moon, another cycle. Everything's just, as it goes round, it's about trying to pay attention and learn something so that you can make a better choice, not just for you, because, hey, yeah, that's great, but actually better about the rest of the world because that makes you a better person. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, otherwise you're doomed to, if you don't try and make that better choice, you're doomed to repeat whatever the... Exactly. The trauma was right. Yeah, <laughs> and that's well, you know that's one of the problems with tradition and particularly initiatory traditions is, is that after a while the this is how it's been done and this is how it must always be done be, begins to become a prison and, yeah. and ends up becoming well we've got to do it this way even though we realise that it could be done. Yeah, well, I think that's a misunderstanding of what tradition is, because if, you know, if you ask any folklorist or any, you know, anthropologist, what's mm -hmm. tradition, they will tell you that it's an evolving thing. Um, exactly. Because something was done a particular way once upon a time because, because it exactly. worked for that group of people. Mm -hmm. And they went, hey, that was good. We'll write it down and pass it on yeah. to the next people. Yeah. Exactly. And then the next people went, oh, I think we just need to tweak that slightly. Um, and so on and so on. And then it evolves. Yeah. Um, and, and then when when those of us who are LGBT pop up our heads and go, hello, this bit this thing <laughs> here doesn't work for us. And then the, all the homophobes go, well, touch it, it's the tradition. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, but, having swapped and changed all various other bits of the tradition according to however they feel. Oh. Exactly, yeah. But because homophobia comes into play, suddenly, nope, you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, or whatever, you know, because because you, you get the race card the same, you know, oh no, you can't use the, that god or that goddess because you're not yep. genetically part of that race or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you think, yeah, you're sticking yourself in a little box again and the universe doesn't come with edges. Yeah, you know? right. Which is a pretty mind blowing thought on the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's constantly expanding. Everything is getting further away from each other. And, you know, eventually there'll be a great implosion, which means that at some point, no matter where we all go, we're all going to come together. Yes. <laughs> it's one great big supernova. 
Yep, it'll be the Gnab Gib. <laughs> <laughs> another another great Douglas Adams quote. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, Douglas. Douglas. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, all in favour say aye. Aye. <laughs> um, so, how about uh, personal practice as well as the coven? So, do you have do you have a sort of a daily thing that you do? Um, I wouldn't say I have a daily practice, but the witchcraft and the cult stuff that I do does factor into my everyday life. Mm. So, you know, as part of the tradition, there's a whole load of prayers and rites that we have and words that you kind of just sort of pick up as you go along. Um, and something that you deliberately learn when you write something new. So either I'm working on something new, um, in which case it's probably something to do with how my day has been and I'm trying to link that into something divine in whatever way that that happens to come together, be it some writing or some music or whatever it is. Um, but at the same time, you know, I might be out and about and I might see a really beautiful moon and I'll go, oh, I'm just going to say a prayer to the goddess or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, it does factor in. Or I might be making myself um, a, a, a mug of tea or coffee and it might strike me it's been a while since I've practised a consecration over something. <laughs> and I might just consecrate my mug of coffee. <gasps> I love it. I know. Oh, no. I'm going to just... start doing that. No, uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It, you, yeah. It, it, into my everyday life it matters so much to me yeah. that actually when I'm wanting to work something serious and do a serious ritual I want to just know that those words are going to come but actually it's it's a pleasure to be able to do magic it's a pleasure to be part of the occult it's not something that I'm forced to do I'm not driven to do it I'm here for my own free <laughs> will and volition <laughs> and I enjoy doing it yeah. so yeah Absolutely. <laughs> well, it really just happens, you know. Yeah. Exactly. So there are so many times that it'll, it'll happen. If I'm potting on some plants or something, I'll be there putting a little bit of energy into them, hoping that they grow. You know, on a really basic level, the craft is so much just a part of my life. I mean, it's just how it is. I have a dark beard. I have an interest <laughs> in how I see the world. You know, it, it's part of that. It, it's not separate to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm I'm hopeless at actually setting aside time to do a specific practice every day. So, um, but I think I, 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 I always see things through that lens. Yes. Yeah, I, I have. I, I, I must admit, I have quite a a regular and profound personal practice. But then again, I suppose growing up Catholic, <laughs> you know, you kind of have it drummed into your head of having some kind of taking time every day to, to, to acknowledge the other, acknowledge the divine, acknowledge the world, etc. cetera. Um, mine tends to be, I suppose, because it, it's the longest rooted personal practices is, is actually very much focused on <laughs> meditation and yoga and internal energy work and um, that kind of thing rather than necessarily um, practices taken from the traditional occult or, or the traditional uh, Wiccan formula. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose in that it's more thinking of myself, you know, for, the, for me the reason I do the craft, the reason I do anything is it's, it's all subsumed under the same, I'm trying to understand, I'm trying to attain, to uh, come fully conscious. I mean, you know, there's all sorts of endless new agey hippie shit that you can reframe it as. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of, for me, that, that that's the occult. It, it's the, you know, to know, to will, to yeah. dare, to keep silent. That's <coughs> kind of, everything subsumes under that so mm. I'm, I'm i'm very similar to will in that i see witchcraft and magic everywhere every day um i see it when i wake up in the morning and i step outside i get up very early and i step outside and the sun is rising or it's a cloudy day i it's it's everywhere so for me the divinity rather than trying to say god goddess etc etc that that vital energy of nature flows through everything so when i acknowledge it in everything i acknowledge it in myself so i have a lot of that as just a very daily process that goes on all the time um a lot of the other time because we have a regular weekly training 
Um, I am always thinking about and meditating on whatever the training is going to be that week or whatever ritual I'm planning in a couple of weeks time, um, beginning to get that already, um, thinking, oh, who am I going to get to do what parts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm doing a lot of that. If we're doing a meditation on our Friday training evening, then it's about working through that meditation and understanding it often, even if I've done that a hundred times before, I still like to go through the processes of thinking about it, etc. So in that, in its own way, is also my spiritual practice because it constantly has me refreshing and rethinking not only my craft, but my teaching process, my perspectives. So that in itself is an interesting process. So I have both of those kind of running along together in various forms and disguises throughout my week. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Oh God, I can't get, I can't wait to get back to in-person ritual. Though. Oh, I know, I know. We, 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 we're luckily enough, we've just hit a point where we are allowed to have um, six people together. Ooh. So, uh, because, because at the moment the coven is only five, of us, we're quite lucky on that score. And everyone said we're all going to do flow tests beforehand. Um, so we've all agreed to that to make separate sure- Separate chalices. Separate chalices. We're, yep. we're, 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 we're working with a separate chalice and a, a more a jug of consecrated wine. We've done a little bit of that before. It's worked really well. Um, so yeah, to, I started doing that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we kind of, we've kind of all agreed that we're gonna, we're gonna go for as much safety as we can. And, Hopefully, you manage to get a midsummer <laughs> ritual in next weekend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're doing our midsummer online, but we're hoping to get Lammas in person. That would be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be yeah. so nice to get back to it. Oh, yeah. Like, you, you can do some stuff over Zoom, but it's not quite the same. Yeah, no, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Not, not quite yeah. the same as doing a good room yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because all your energies bounce off each other. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, can't wait. Um, so do you have a favourite book on queer paganism, Wicca, witchcraft? Uh, you don't really... I don't. I'm the intellectual. I, you know, <laughs> my, my background and all my degrees and everything else, I, I, I overthink everything. So I'm more the reader than... I'm, I'm, always I'm, been a kind of, I'm very um, relaxed. I'm much more of a, um, look, let's just go outside and do it. Okay, let's let's not worry too much about the intellectual and the overthinking and the overanalysis. Let's go out there, put our hands on the earth, and actually feel it. <laughs> we'll 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 discuss all the finer points of it later. So uh, for me, there's not really a lot of books that I've read. Um, I'm much more of an experienced kind of person, and David has read quite a bit more. I would thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I suppose the the. The, the, the one person that I go back to a lot tends to be uh, Starhawk, yeah, actually, because yeah, yeah. a, a lot of the stuff, I suppose because she was one of the first writers about magic and craft, uh, even though she's not in our tradition and she comes from the fairy tradition, but with the fairy tradition, of course, there's a very interesting take on gender and polarity yeah. and energy and stuff as well. And then also because of her very, very profound uh, geopolitics and feminist politics, um, she was like one of the first people that I read that would truly, even before the word inclusive started, she was the, she was the person that, that she was that voice in the early days of genuinely yeah. inclusive. Um, so I, a lot of the stuff come that, that, that I, really, I, I, I invariably end up coming back to going, yeah, but Starhawk said it really well, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's probably Starhawk, although I must admit I have been reading your books, mm -hmm. um, particularly uh, the, the the Dark Mirror and the Journey and stuff, uh, partly because of it. anyone who knows me on Instagram, is I do have, uh, I have been a very profound, very fair experience with mm -hmm. your um, and that a lot of it was to do with conf confronting the, the, the shadow and working with the shadow. You would have thought being a third degree you wouldn't know how long I would have dealt with all that kind of shit, but then people are people, you know, witches are people too. And sometimes you can be neurodiverse and have all sorts of other stuff going on. Um, and, but your book has been really in 
interesting that that, that idea of being able to how to confront those elements in yourself that you disregard or you pass away or, or what have you. Um, and a lot of that for me, actually, it, it was because of growing up Catholic back in the day. I, I, I had a lot of buried stuff about dealing with my sexuality, dealing with the, uh, the acceptability of my sexuality. I'm weird, I prefer to use marriage, you know, but fuck, you still do. Um, and so that, that actually those problems came because of a lack of visibility, representation, acceptance of my gender and my sexuality. It's one of the reasons why I left the church in the first place, as well as a whole load of theology as well. There was kind of big questions to be made about, well, you know, the whole idea of being born sin sinful and dualism and all that kind of thing. Um, the craft, coming to the craft, was actually part of my healing process and my healing journey right at the very beginning was about being able to go, say, well, this is a nature-based religion. Nature itself doesn't give a shit about sexuality. You know, plants grow and well, animals populate itself. itself. You know, not everything is heteronormative. Uh, you know, it, everything is constructed other than nature itself. So um, to be able to come back to that uh, has really helped uh, and and the inclusivity and the fact that actually as a tradition it is beginning to change it is beginning to reawaken and think outside the box and beginning to be a lot more like jeffrey says you know well actually the the gods can't be white and middle class and heteronormative forever they have to grow because we are growing as a species as yeah. a flowering of cosmic consciousness um and that actually anything that talks about that and it's not just within the craft it's also i see it being spoken a lot in in, in the buddhist tradition in the hindu tradition in the jewish tradition that sort of i think we are at one of those periods where there is an awakening happening and hopefully as a species we are evolving to being able to go you know societally we, are, we think like this societally we're realizing that life is more but Diverse yeah, but I think in a kind of in a kind anyway, in a so. kind of a way, it, it, it's a it's an interesting. I I often think, um, twenty years ago, everyone was talking about Aquarius and the mm -hmm. age of Aquarius, and then that age very quietly slipped in, and everyone went, "Oh, Aquarius hasn't done anything." But it's not an age. That age, that concept of the age of Aquarius, is a very long time. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think through that time slowly occultically things change yeah. and us as a community that exclusive idea is part of that change the inclusive that, idea. yeah inclusive idea sorry inclusive idea is part of that change that we the occultists not just the wiccans all the other occult groups need to and should be start bringing in mm -hmm. i mean the truth of it is is that I came in thinking, well, I'm the only gay in the village, and all I've ever had from the witchcraft community has been acceptance. Mm. So that's the truth. Even though I sometimes had to stand my corner, I have only had acceptance. And they've accepted my husband, and they've accepted other gay members of the coven that have come along in various shapes, forms, and disguises. Because I think in witchcraft, we have that little subversiveness within mm. us. We've just got to help and encourage it a little more yeah, yeah i think so yeah you know by actually going well come on we can do this everybody i think it's quite interesting that again it's something that that we found a lot of strength in ourselves when we were first beginning working together and beginning to to, to form the coven there was a lot of well there were there were several very vocal voices about mm, this isn't acceptable. Most other people were kind of, yeah, okay, we'll do what you like. You're a third degree. It's your life kind of thing. Um, but actually, it was coming back to uh, the early stuff that Alex had done. And, and uh, when um, some of that kind of came out of the closet, uh, almost. Mm -hmm. And then very specifically, actually, the his um, deathbed tapes. And there is a, a piece where 
he Alex specifically talks about that the cupbearers of Ganymede are coming and the craft they are coming with a message from the gods and the craft must listen to the children of Ganymede they must listen to the cupbearers of Ganymede mm -hmm. uh, and for both of us it, it was really kind of one of those like spiritual light bulb moments that was like he's talking about the LGBTQ community he's talking about inclusivity he's talking about being able to go outside the box people we've got to accept everybody we can make a a home a spiritual home a a spiritual path of enlightening and awakening for everybody and really make it everybody it doesn't have to be let's go right back to crowley himself magic is for all i shall say that again magic <laughs> is for all, you know and we'll go back to that statement later <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah i mean i was going to say um you know like ceremonial magic had same sex had same sex initiation for decades so well that, this is this is this is what kind of ceremonial magic kind of dispensed with your physical gender in every way going well it's about more than that even though if you like your physical self is also a part of it but it doesn't have to be either male or female your yeah. physical gender can be all sorts of things yeah and um, the guy would be adept is to become spiritually androgynous anyway right exactly so, yeah. exactly so i was re a lot of things like that when i began to look into the, the ceremonial magic encouraged me and encouraged me and how I then started to put the wellhead together to actually go, well, in this coven, I don't want to get trapped with those concepts of polarity and men must, and a man must have a woman and a woman must have a man to do any kind of ritual. No, we get together and do ritual. And if we're a group of men or a group of women, we just enjoy the ritual and we, we dispense with too much worry about what we might physically be because we can house the gods and the goddesses no matter who they are. Yeah. It's all the same under a row. It's all the same <laughs> under a row. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's one of the things that, that, that is different about how our practice evolved, particularly the practice within the coven work, was that maybe traditionally within the, within witchcraft the battery is seen externally so so you know you're one pole and the magical person that you're working with is the other pole and you generate energy between them mm. in the ceremonial actually each magician i am my alone own polarity and yes. you yeah. form the polarity within you you can then weave these incredibly interesting energetic tapestries where you're weaving your energy within and then you're weaving it with someone else and they're weaving it with someone else and you get these amazing flows that happen that are not based on actually i'm only one half and i need another yeah. half to do to some magic. Mm. Um, well, the, thing is, the weird thing is right funny. i've never been to i mean although i've been to rituals where people have said oh you've got to stand boy girl boy girl yeah. oh, um, <laughs> i've never actually been to a in my entire 30 years of being in the craft i have never been to a ritual where somebody was actually making polarity using yeah. Yes, male and female gender, yes. unless you count consecrating the cakes and wine or doing an invocation. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's it's, supposed to be about polarity, but you know, in my experience, you can you can have a person of any gender invoking a deity of any gender onto an, yes, well, yes. another person I, I, of any gender. Yeah. Yes, it's more, longer I, to say. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. But I, I think I think that's it's divinity. That's that's that's, that's, all, that's, that's, that's the matters. point. That's that's the exploration is mm -hmm. to be able to go. Actually, we all house divinity, mm -hmm. so yeah. therefore, yeah. therefore, we should all be able to experience different forms of divinity. And I suppose, in its own way, and I often think about this. I think that very old traditional view of the craft. I think it has changed a lot now of boys and girls was actually quite crippling. Yes, I think because so. It's it very meant, rigid. Because it, because it meant yeah. that it meant that there were often people in rituals who were almost left out because they didn't have a magical partner because they 
didn't feel as though they could generate any kind of energy because there wasn't a connection with another person mm. and therefore became almost stunted in what they were doing as opposed to well hang on a minute if you make your own polarity within yourself and you just be you you know the whole point boy girl let's make a third let's be the third that's all of those becomes incredibly liberating as an occultist i make my own self Yeah. And if we're then in a room full of people who are all doing that as well, we we rise above it all and touch the gods. But it's kind yeah. of like if, if you've got a cup and a six and you're working external polarity, you've got three batteries there. But if every person is their own battery, you've got six batteries. <laughs> we're yeah. much energy. We're <laughs> we're we are forced to. We have one priestess and five <laughs> and four priests. <laughs> we have to dispense with polarity absolutely yeah <laughs> the, the, the so-called <laughs> yeah. We've, yeah. Yeah. we've tried to stand yeah. as witches and our poor lady priestesses run ragged <laughs> <laughs> the, um yeah i mean you know i i like i'm really keen on resonance and synergy as well like um, yeah exactly you know, exactly i think that's, that's really I important like point, i liked your point about synergy that, that actually that's most of what you tend to yeah energy that is used in ritual is it's very rarely based on polarity it's it's everyone putting mm -hmm. your energy into the comb into the work that's done yes and that's yeah. not together no energy. yes exactly that's just synergy yeah energy. Yeah. It gets very the polarity thing gets very confusing. It's yeah. easier just to go just be yourself. Let's practice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as I said, I I have I've done uh, various experimental workings making polarity in other ways. Yes, than, yes, yes, yes. Um the the alleged ability to make it with two genders um, yeah, yeah, which I yeah. don't believe in. Um and my one of my most successful workings was making polarity with people who like marmite and people who like chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, my problem would be I'd be in both. Where'd you just yes. get more of my chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, on this particular occasion, I'm afraid you had to pick a side. <laughs> <laughs> But a couple of people <laughs> change sides. It, 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 it does kind of demonstrate that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, it's an occult construct we yeah. no longer need, really. Outside. Yeah. We can, we can think outside the box. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I've also done it with like morning people and evenings, yeah. morning yeah. people and night owls. And it's just sort of, you know, it was kind of weird because I did it to prove that you can make clarity with absolutely anything. And then also I do a thing about resonance and then I do a thing about synergy. Yeah. And there are people who, and the reason I did all this was because when I wrote the book saying, you know, let's be more inclusive of LGBT people, the first thing people did was come back and say, but what about polarity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my that. initial reaction was, well, what about polarity? No one's doing any polarity. What are you talking about? Yeah, and yeah. then I thought, well, I'm going to prove that polarity has nothing to do with gender. Yes. Um, and that's why I then did a whole series of workshops. So now everyone thinks I'm obsessed with polarity. I'm like, oh God, I can't yeah. bloody win. <laughs> um, when I when I when I started in the craft, I had a lot of polarity questions. I had a lot of polarity arguments to make with people over the whole subject. Uh, after a while, I just kind of it was probably another reason why I thought, oh, I just can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, you know, I think there's more. There are more valuable things to explore and more valuable concepts when we look at ourselves as being complete rather than trying to separate. Yeah, absolutely. Into... Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, somebody contacted me the other day and said, um, I was doing a class about some of your work and I was like, oh, that's good. And then they went, um, and, uh, you know, I wanted to emphasize what you said about the importance of polarity. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. It's like, thanks for the shout out, but. Um, <laughs> I'm just waiting for my web. Oh, it's done it. My yeah. webcam was out of focus, and it was really off-putting. It is also one of the things that that can also become a bit of a problem is that you can you become you know pigeonholed, attracted, and, and and actually yeah. we initially it was actually a bit of a problem for for us because everyone kind of knew oh they're a Jeffrey, they're the gay couple, they run a cover. It took like several years later where we were then chatting to people and and going no 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 we don't run a gay coven oh yeah we yeah, don't yeah. just work gay magic we just happen to be a 
couple who are gay who are running a company. And our coven is and open to anybody. A lot of our coven but members you, happen to be gay, but our and you, that's because is a you woman stated. and she's gender and she's, <laughs> and she's straight. I mean, if other couples you know, stated that they were accepting that they were inclusive, that's they it. would have yeah. more inclusivity yeah. in their coven. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, the other day I was banging yeah. on about this on Instagram saying, you know, if your coven is inclusive, say so in your coven advert because yeah, otherwise no yeah. one's going to blend you know you can trawl through all the adverts online for covens mm. on uh, mandragora magica um and an awful lot of them don't actually say whether that coven is inclusive or not yeah, 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 yeah. even ones i know to be inclusive so i put that out and a number of the ones who actually are inclusive went oh good point yvonne and added it to their description yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is you know if you don't say you're inclusive then everyone's <laughs> just going to think you're heteronormative you know one of the reasons why like you know you, you were saying when you first met yeah it, why we came up yes. when you did the google search is because right early early back in the day we got you remember back in the early early days and harry and, and diana's and all of that lot um and when we were first talking about should the craft be on the internet at all and should people have websites and what about earthbound and all that kind of stuff and we were sort of early in the days going because I've got a big thing about social media. I did my entire master's degree on that. Um, it was that idea of going, well, no, 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 we, we need to be visible. And you, you cannot get any kind of change unless you're in visibility. So we will go out there and we will go, yeah, we're a gay couple, you run a cover. But nobody else really did. So <laughs> we kind of became this like, oh, that's that's the source of gay information about gay witchcraft <laughs> and stuff. It's like, no, 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 we don't really do gay witchcraft. We just do witchcraft. We just do we just do witchcraft. The thing with witchcraft is that happens we get. witchcraft fits in for everybody yeah, and so, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just that its starting point was something very heterosexual and very heteronormative, mm. but it's changing and growing. And the more people from more of the diverse community who come into it, the more change and the better it will grow. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And we've just got to keep encouraging it and keep encouraging it and going, if you want to study, come and study with us, come yeah. and study. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter what goes on up here and what goes on in here. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's one of the reasons I started going on about in being inclusive as opposed, because I saw a lot of what I, well, it looked to me and it turns out I was quite possibly wrong, um, but it looked to me like there was two separate paths developing. One was a load of heterosexual type covens and another one was a load of gay type covens. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, can't we work together? It's I'm bisexual, for God's sake. you know, I'm bisexual. So a purely same sex, you know, focused coven wouldn't work for me. And a purely I, heterocentric coven doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm <laughs> like, you know. Again, it's one of those things that as we as we're working with these ideas is to make sure that we actually stay inclusive and that means we include everyone and that we're not afraid to have a look at what heteronormative wicca is and was we don't have to practice it but we can go yes there are things we can learn from it and explore because as soon as we close the door we're putting ourselves back in that box yeah. and we need to look at everyone and by doing that we allow some of those heteronormative covens to also think a little outside their box too yeah. which will do them good yeah you yeah. know, we're, we're about a learning process. We'll be learning and evolving and learning and evolving. And it's about sharing our, our ideas and not going, oh, you're wrong because you've done such and such. It's about going, wow, such and such works for you. How does that happen? How do you yeah. get that to happen? And becoming interested in our differences again. And through that, learning to be better than we are and learning to be more than we are. Mm -hmm. Because by doing that, we can then maybe get out into the world and also begin to make the world a slightly better place because mm. at the moment that could do with a lot of healing on every level yeah. and we the magic people the magical people not just witches of the world us all could bring a little bit of positive energy into this world when we work mm, absolutely for us yeah. to do. i think that's absolutely it, it, it reminds me of a little piece that, that you said in your clarity talk about um, that who does the grail serve, you know, which is one of the major threads that runs through the whole grail legend. 
um, for me, you can reinterpret that as being who does the craft serve, who does the divine serve, who does your spirituality serve? And unless you can genuinely and honestly answer to say it serves the universe, it serves everyone, it is trying to make the world a better place, and I'm doing that by working on myself, unless you can say that, I don't think you have a valid spirituality. And that's got to be inclusive. It's got to be. That's not about me telling you what to think. It's about me going, what do you what think? Do what you do you think? You Let say. me share your ideas. Inspire me and teach me about stuff that I don't know because yeah. I don't know everything. I yeah, know. I mean, we've all got different perspectives than like a friend of mine from years ago said about, you know, when you when you get different perspectives coming together, then you get a multiple perspective view of the world. And then that's when you really start getting somewhere. And the, I, I used to explain that to all my students when I was talking about information theory and stuff like that, that the more you look at something from one perspective, you will only ever have a two-dimensional image. You need to see it from every perspective all around, and then it suddenly becomes 3D. And by being 3D, you can look at it from every perspective, every angle. Mm. So, Which is also the idea behind the Indigenous um, sharing circle as well, that you yeah, see things yeah. from multiple perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. The open mind becomes the knowledgeable mind. Yeah. Yeah. Be open yet unbroken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, possibly based off what you just said, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know how you're going to answer this next question. But, um, <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, so, do you have a definition of queer magic? Magic is magic. We're queer people. Who do it. <laughs> magic. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, once again, I can only um, restate what Alistair Crowley said, magic is for all. And I truly believe magic is for all, no matter your race, colour, creed, background, gender. I believe that one can dance happily with the gods, whoever you are. Magic is for all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I also think that mag magic is inherently queer. Um, well, exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Magic <laughs> is queer. queer. If you define queer as being outside the box, it's not limited. It's 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 questioning. It's constantly breaking down barriers. I mean, all if that's magic, that's yep. queer. There you uh, go. See, inherently queer. All I can say is, as as queer people, we've always had one foot in the other realm. Yeah. We're born with one foot in the other realm. It's why culturally we've been chosen as shamans and guides and the wise ones, you know, we've always been there. Yeah. Uh, we're meant to be here now. Definitely. And, and uh, you know, if you look back at historic witchcraft like Sadra and, you know, Bacon and all of that stuff, um, and, uh, you know, the Ergy men who were also yes. into Sedra, historically, we were doing those things. Yes, so, exactly, exactly. Yep. It's because we were the ones who, for me, it's, it, it's because when you realise that you're queer, that you're different, you, you don't fit, certainly within our very limited societal roles, it makes you question. And, yeah. and it's what, why I left Catholicism because it, it was actually my gamer saved me almost sorry <laughs> <laughs> because it made me question it made me go yes. hey, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not going to have the you know get married and have two kids and have a dog and you know, all that kind of stuff because that's not and if that's not that part of my life then actually maybe I can question the politics that I was raised in and, and, and my diet and and everything you yep. know absolutely my experience too yeah like one of the most liberating things that ever happened to me was my best friend coming out to me as gay yeah, yeah, yeah. um because that started me on my own journey i mean i'd already had kind of you know same-sex attraction thoughts and stuff yeah. but i hadn't necessarily articulated oh yes i'm bisexual mm. um i mean technically i'm pansexual but you know Back in the day we just it was bisexual and i continue yeah. to identify as bisexual and i do i don't accept the limiting definition of bisexual that i have now yeah. but yeah totally that moment of questioning sexuality and gender um opened up 
all the other things to question, absolutely. I think it's why patriarchy hates it quite so much. Well, yeah. And I think it's possibly one of the things that, that Alex was talking about the cup bearers is. They're just scared of change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they change. And they're scared of change. They're scared that if they accept that somebody else has got a different sexuality yeah. or a different mm. perspective on what it means to be, what they really take to be the core of the foundation of who and what they are, that suddenly it means that they're going to have to call all of that into question and change. Well, well, they're only going to have to change if they suddenly discover that they don't like themselves, given new knowledge, because they've realised that they've just how they previously suppose, acted. Yeah, yeah. I think in, in I think I think you're quite right there in that in that in a way it's kind of like a it is a fear reaction in that when you grow up and you grow up queer, you reach a point where you do question your sexuality, you question your gender, you if you like, you go on a quest. Um, and when you get to the end of that quest, you truly discover who you are. You've, okay. you've been given, if you like, you've been given a gift yeah. to have a look at yourself. Whereas if you're heterosexual, you're pushed by society into your corner to do what you should do. And that is what you do. Mm -hmm. You are never given that liberating opportunity to think, oh, hang on a minute. What is this gender thing? What is my sexuality thing? So you're not given those opportunities. Whereas as queer people, we are, and that and that gives us an edge. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it allows us to go. Look, we we've, we've looked deep into some things. We, we yeah. yeah, you know. It's and I think it's a good thing to do. It's a good thing as you grow up to be able to look at your life and question. Yes. Yeah. It's what the. Uh, the referred to that film earlier, The Inevitability of Colour. It's actually what it talks about on a symbolic level. It, it, it talks about that almost society and, and, and the way that we live, we, we're, we're encouraged to think in terms of black and white and that there are only these two things. And you know, there is black and white and men and women and dogs and all this kind of stuff. But actually, when you start questioning that black and white, you suddenly realize, actually, no, they're not black and white. There's a gray in the middle. And oh, my God, there's an entire fucking spectrum. Wow, that's the inevitability of color. Color is the, you're going to have to accept it at some point. Yes, it reminds me of that movie. And I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's um, the entire town is in black and white. And then oh, God, there's certain, the people yeah. who are colorful start to yeah. appear. And then everyone's prejudiced against the colourful people. Yes, yes. as well. It, it's, yes. it's actually in the kiss that they suddenly discover the colour. It's weird. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that movie. Starhawk, you know, because Starhawk talks about actually the the power of the erotic, not genital erotic, but just that actually the like the stimulate. erotic is, is is that energy of being alive. Yes. That energy of the physical energy of, and, and the joy of being alive and in the present moment. And yeah. that's, that's where the magic is. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because like one of the, it's interesting you mentioned that because one of the arguments that I always say for same-sex initiation is that there is an erotic component mm -hmm. to the connection between the, the initiator and the candidate. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people, usually Americans, as we said, go, eh, that's a bit creepy. Like, are you saying the initiator's got to fancy the the candidate? And I'm like, no. It's taking it wrong. It's, it's Yeah, it, the erotic is an atmosphere, not a, you know, yeah. so I started saying sensual instead, but I don't think it captures yeah, the same. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. You know, um, so, you know, I had, I was initiated by a woman. Um, you know, it was all done symbolically. Um, so there was never any of that sort of, actual sexual energy between us but actually it's one of those nights that i will never forget you know we've all had one of those experiences yeah. where you, it's seared into the, your mind that you'll never forget any mm. of that you know it, it's just so much a part of who you are because it's so you know all of your senses are there they're all firing because mm. you're there you're connected to the, all of the elements you know you're there you're connected to all of these other people in a way that you've never been connected to people before it's all you know, it's one of those things that happens inside yeah. a circle. And that erotic you know. charge is, is, is not a sexual erotic charge, it's an aliveness. Yes. But, that, but, but my, my argument, well, not argument, but what I've always said is that that connection 
can be made through somebody of any, any gender. gender. Yeah, yeah, but of course. Yeah. So it can yeah. uh, initiation and connection to the craft and connection to the mm. elements, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, could be passed on from a man to a man yeah. or a woman to a woman. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what's so special mean, about my gender? Well, you what's know, so special about any one gender? I, I yeah. it, it's unique to me. Uh, yeah. 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 Why, yes, but I do feel like, I mean, you know, I think we should be open to the possibility of same-sex initiation for for all sorts of reasons, but yes, the, that yes. to me, like the, you know, um, um, I, I was talking to somebody oh. who is a practitioner of the craft um, who is gay, and they said, well, they'd never experienced any erotic charge in the circle, hmm. and I'm like, That's oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Um, I mean, like, here, my story about same-sex initiation is that my first degree was officially conducted by a man right and I always felt that the energy came through the high priestess okay yes yeah. yes 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 um because you know I have a deep admiration yeah. for my yeah. high priestess and um I just always felt that it came through her yeah. right yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and so that I that's one of the reasons why I to me you know the sublimated erotic yeah. is a really important component of the whole thing yeah. 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 oh yes i think i definitely think so i mean but to, to, to me it's always got to come down to the pragmatic uh, as to well did it take yeah you know? and, and did initiation take took <laughs> and your you know there, there, there were questions about my initiation um even though it was all done traditionally and it was done with a woman and stuff but again everyone assumed that because jeffrey was my partner that i must have had a same sex initiation um, and it, it was always kind of like, well, you've worked with me, you've seen, I'm perfectly capable it's, of tapping into the energy. So however it was that my initiation was taken, it obviously worked. And, and, you know, and that's all that matters. And sometimes yeah. it's, it's getting hung up on a, <laughs> on a traditional, exactly. on a traditional technicality that yeah. we probably don't need to be getting hung up on because yeah. at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah. The couple of people I know who have gone through same-sex initiation, um, one of them through Alex, um, is a witch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, can, what more can I say? There's nothing yeah, more. Yeah, right. Just four inches really matters. Yeah, yeah, that's what matters at the end of the day. Um, yeah. But I do, you know, I do feel like I think a lot of the kind of anti-same-sex initiation bullshit is like no one's i've never seen a single argument oh i've seen one argument that didn't boil down to the same arguments that people trot out against same-sex marriage oh yeah um, exactly exactly so you know and this one argument was that that somehow the the male and female kind of intertwine through the initiatory oh yeah yeah, yeah. lineage but, you know, i'm like oh that's nice but you know that can still happen but I, I still to, think we should be open to, to same-sex initiation. I have to, I have to, I have to say at this point that um, they they've hived off from our coven now. But um, we had a, a wonderful, wonderful um, heterosexual couple in our coven. Um, he was just superb. Has the most wonderful energy, and I have intertwined my energy in many, many circles with his. Uh, through invocations, through receiving invocations, through just standing next to him. And all I can say is that it brought me closer to one of my brothers in the craft and his sexuality and my sexuality had very little to do with yeah, it. Yeah. Mm. And I don't want that opportunity never to be there because... Yeah we've decided to go down a particular line when my brother's in my craft or my brother's in my in the craft. Mm. Just because I feel a warmth towards them doesn't mean to say I'm going to sleep with them. <laughs> yeah, right, absolutely. <laughs> it's the same, and it is exactly the same with my sisters in the craft. I have twined yeah. my energy with them. I have danced amongst the stars with them and I am close to their energy. It still doesn't mean I'm going to sleep with them all. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. exactly, yeah. Sex. I mean, you it's know, I'm monogamous as it happens, so. It's not, a, it's yeah. not about sex. It's about yeah, it's our a... witchcraft and our love of the magic and our love for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah um tell us a bit about your website because that's that's been there for 20 years 30 yes. years now. <laughs> many, many many years, years. <laughs> actually it can't quite be 30 years because the internet hasn't been around that long but no 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 so so well well, well. it was it was on geocities back in yeah the day, wow you know. yeah i had a geocities website <laughs> is that like dialogue? Uh, yeah it is. <laughs> yes <laughs> So I don't know what that was either. Oh, <laughs> <bless> <laughs> How come I, 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 I took my degree before the internet even existed? <laughs> 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 yep. yep. <laughs> so did I. Um, so well, so the website, a lot of the website is um, is David's work. So I tend to go, oh, write something about such and such, um, and then I can have like an hour's rent, and then about a week oh. later, um, David Oops. will have will have turned this all into a superb piece of writing, which he has fabulously popped up onto the website, which over the years has become all sorts of bits and pieces. And yeah, it, it, it's, we, we, when we first set it up, there was always, the, again, there was that complicated thing of, we were in an initiatory tradition, we do have oath-bound material, how what much can we say? What can we say publicly? But at the same time, if you don't say it publicly, then nobody ever knows it even exists. So it's kind of a, a, a mix. Most of it is, is sort of open court stuff. Um, and a lot of it, unfortunately, is purple prose. And <laughs> David goes off on one. <laughs> 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 a bit of an, or a writer. And, and, and sort of like a blog before there were blogs. Uh, well, I do have a blog. Yeah, you do indeed. Uh, it's very good. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, we so, never have deep and meaningful thoughts and, and, and write stuff normally after a meditation. Uh, that occasionally posts will go up on the, onto the band Yogi, which is then linked into the digital outlet, uh, the outlet website. So it's a, it's it's always definitely a work in progress. Yeah. There's entire sections that we we go. Oh, we must write. Oh, I must write an entire section on mindfulness and meditation and how taking time to be in the pleasant custody of the root of every magical practice and all this kind of stuff. And then we never quite get round to it because you're too busy working or you're too busy meditating or you're too busy i think a lot of so. a lot of it was a lot of it was a way to say to people within the, the lgbtq plus community um here we are a group uh, here we are a couple of gay men um we are running a coven and we are making it as inclusive as we can. Mm -hmm. And that inclusive process is also about us learning what inclusiveness is. Mm -hmm. So it was a way to go if you're a gay man or a gay woman or you're trans or you're pan, any, any of those groups, whoever you are, we're here to explore spirituality together mm. through a pagan context so a lot of it is through the cycle of the year the change of the seasons how we can see ourselves reflected within it mm. and grow through that um mm. it's also a chance to hopefully find yourself an inclusive community that is accepting and once a week we get together to haha, talk about our favorite subject, the occult and witchcraft. And whenever we can to get together in the temple and do a ritual and dance and sing with the gods and just to be together mm -hmm. and to be ourselves together. We can take off our masks for that we can wear for society and we can take off our clothes and we can dance, sing, feast and be merry. That's what I think. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So um Well I joined when I never looked back. So oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah, I, I I also went through the The website is to kind of go well, very much take easy. comfort, we're out there. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. And and I, I think I went through a similar process of yeah, thinking yeah. about websites and books and you know, how do I write about the craft without actually dropping any oath-bound material in the yeah, yeah. in the mix? Is, and mm -hmm. and also then, how do I make sure that people don't assume that just because I've written this thing that people assume that that's the definitive? Yeah, answer, exactly. Or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, 
back in the day, one of the purposes, one of the main purposes that we set up the, web, the website was because we were getting a lot of people saying, but you can't be gay and a witch. And so it was almost to be able to go, actually, if anybody is telling you that, it's pants. Because <laughs> here we are, we're gay, we're gay, we exist. And nobody can question that. We exist, we're gay, and it's working. So, you know. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which is not necessarily that important anymore because luckily there are enough gay people, there are enough people of a queer spirituality who have been able to go, actually, you know what, we don't care what old traditionalists and bloody daddies yeah. and stuff. They can think what they think and we love them dearly, but that's their business. We're going on. We're and enjoying people. ourselves and opening our arms to everything and everyone. Oh, and yeah. that's just a great experiment. Oh, I know, exactly. Why can't we be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living proof that, that <laughs> queer witchcraft exists. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So uh, anything else you want to add? No, I think that's about it. Other, other than just, I, lo I this is one of the things I absolutely adore, and it's one of the things that I love about the craft. It's why we have, like Jeffrey says, our, our regular uh, training meetings is there's nothing like a, a, a good talk to people about anything and everything. You know, it, 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 it's what makes the world go around. It's what makes the occult what it is, is that it's always interesting to talk to others and it's about to us. think outside what you would normally think. It's, yeah. about, it's about us as people. Um, getting together to talk and explore ideas. Mm. Um, I, f I find it, it fascinating when I meet other people and I can hear their ideas and li listen to their journey and find gems of understanding and wisdom about the gods that I can take on board myself. Mm. Um, and I think we're, as a cultist, it's about getting together and talking, talking yeah. about the gods, sharing our stories, sharing our oral traditions, um, sharing our understanding and being a community. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's uh, at least in England, I feel a lot, there's a lot of trying to fracture our communities. Um, and I feel that we should be working very hard to create communities and bring community back together. Mm -hmm. And coven and witchcraft we need to be a close community, you know, helping and guiding each other and understanding each other mm. so that we can stand together. Yeah, definitely. And it's one of the reasons I've been doing this series of interviews that um, to, to give people a sense that, you know, there is a, a queer pagan community yes. and yes. that, you know, we've been here since the beginning of the pagan yes. revival. Thank you very much. Exactly. Yeah. It, 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 in fact, I would imagine in the very, very early, early, early beginnings of the pagan movement, pre-Christian, let's say, when we were shamans in huts and caves, I suspect gay people had a very big part to Absolutely. play. Absolutely, yeah. I, su I suspect a lot of the wise women and the cunning men who lived at the edge of, edge of the village that people went to see were gay had blurred genders etc cetera, etc cetera. it's what enabled us to do what we do yeah i think so uh, well hence uh, the whole point about sadra and, and exactly, the spay, exactly. the spay and people I, and i've always felt that as the lgbt community within magic within the occult we are meant to be here yes we have a part to play in helping other people understand their own selves definitely so with that we should oh, carry on <laughs> yeah. keep going make our community bigger and stronger mm -hmm. help each other teach each other um, walk a little way down the road with each other and share our stories absolutely yeah and i as i always like to point out two of the founders of the pagan revival in the early 20th century were Edward Carpenter and Goldsworthy Lowe's Dickinson, who were both gay. Yes, yes, yes. Well, exactly, exactly. Yeah. 
you know, so, and well, Alex Saunders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, quite recent. <laughs> no one can argue that one. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely on our bus. <laughs> exactly. Of mine likes exactly. To say. You know, so, so I think, yeah, we're here and we're here to stay. <laughs> Absolutely. We're here, we're queer, get used to it. <laughs> we're here, yeah. we're queer, we're here Good to old stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks. It's been a blast. And um, it's brilliant. Thank you. brilliant. It's um, yeah. we, we probably talked and talked and talked way too much. Yeah. No, it's fine. I, um, I've got a small but dedicated audience for these. And I know there are uh, people who listen to them while they're doing painting and things like this. So. Oh, fabulous. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Well, it's, this, is, this is mostly what our, our kind of Friday training evening is like. Yeah. We sit and discuss things and talk around things and explore ideas. Yep, very similar to my training too. Yeah, it's what, it's what it's for. It's why it's an oral tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, sharing ideas and arriving at that multiple perspective. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Great. Well, thanks a, again. It's been brilliant. Been and uh, I, I will stop recording now. Mm -hmm.